Hi, Jonathan Sullivan here with a quick catechetical tech tip. One of the questions I get a lot whenever I give presentations is, where do I find the images that I use in my PowerPoint presentations? And in particular, are they copyrighted images that I had to pay for? The truth is I always avoid using copyrighted images, uh, in part because I just don't have the money to shell out that kind of bucks whenever I need an image for a PowerPoint presentation, uh, but also because uh, for me it gets into so many different legal issues about appropriate use of copyright material and uh, different things like that. So I simply avoid using copyrighted images whenever I can. That leads to the question then is where do we find uh, images that were free to use without copyright in PowerPoint presentations for our different catechetical materials? I want to start, though, just by addressing the question of copyright uh, and why copyright is important for us to, to be aware of whenever we're using images and videos and music in our presentations for catechesis. Copyright, for me, is always a justice issue. Uh, our faith teaches us that people have a right to their private property, and just because someone posts their picture or image on the internet doesn't mean that they're making it freely available for anyone to use however they wish. The analogy I like to use is if I drive my car and park it in a public parking lot, that doesn't mean I'm leaving my car there for anyone to use. It's still my property. And it's similar with a photograph that someone may post on the internet. Just because the internet is accessible by anyone doesn't mean that they've put that there for anyone to use. Fortunately, there's good places that we can go to uh, to find images that we can use. I, I, before we get into those sites, though, I want to talk just briefly about different licenses that we're going to come across when we search for images online. Uh, the first is if you find a copyrighted image, unless you have explicit permission to use that copyrighted image, uh, you do not have permission to use it. Copyright always means that the person has established control over their material and they will not allow other people to use it unless you have permission. And there are instances where if you know the artist or if you can contact them in some way and say, you know, I can't afford to pay you for the use of this image, but would you allow me to freely use it for this purpose? In which case you only have permission to use it for that explicit purpose and not for anything else that you may want to use it for in the, in the future. So that's copyright, but there's also other things. Public domain is a really great source for images. Uh, public domain simply means that something has had its copyright expired. Uh, it's no longer uh, subject to copyright, and so anyone can use it for whatever reason. Now, in the past, copyright always expired after a certain amount of time, but in recent years, at least in this country, Congress has amended those laws so that people can perpetually renegotiate that copyright. Uh, a good example is uh, Mickey Mouse. Uh, if Mickey Mouse were still subject to the copyright laws that were established when he was created, uh, Mickey Mouse would be available for anyone to use for whatever purpose, but Disney has constantly uh, reestablished that copyright every time it's up, and so it's still a copyright character, a copyright material. Uh, but a great source for public domain stuff, though, is actually government sources. If you go to NASA, they have pictures that they post, White House pictures, things like that. By law, anything that's created by the government is public domain. So images of, uh, that come from those sources, you always know they're going to be under the public domain. But then the last one, which is a new one, is called a Creative Commons license. Creative Commons is a way of keeping a copyright on something, but establishing a license to allow people to use it. And if you go to creativecommons.org, you can read through all the different types of Creative Commons licenses that there are. Uh, most of them uh, will simply establish how you can use a particular image or video or, or piece of music. Uh, things like whether you have to attribute the original author or not, or the original person who created the material, uh, whether it can be used for commercial products or not, that's one you really need to, to take care of. A lot of them will say that you can use an image for non-commercial use, but if you're making money off it, if you're, say, creating a book or a t-shirt or something like that, then you can't use that image for that. Again, unless you go and contact the person and uh, ask for permission or pay a fee to use it for that. Uh, and then another one is uh, whether you're allowed to edit the image or the, the piece of music or whatever it is. You need to take care of that, whether you have to use it as is or whether you're allowed to go in and, and remix it or, or edit it uh, as you would like. So I'm going to show you just a couple of quick places for images because I think most people, when they're looking for something, it's typically going to be an image. Uh, so the, the site I have up on the screen right now is called morgfile, morgfile.com. And this is actually the first place I will tend to go whenever I'm looking for an image uh, to use in a PowerPoint or, or a video or anything like that. And that's because Morg Files license, uh, as you can see, is very liberal. You are free to edit anything that's on the site that you find. You can use it for commercial purpose or non-commercial purposes, and you can do it without attribution. So you don't have to uh, tell people who the original creator of the content was. So it's basically 
any image that you find on this site is going to be free to use for whatever you could possibly want to use it. Uh, so like I said, it's the first place that I tend to go. Uh, so you just go into here and search, and I'm just going to search for church. And you'll find all these great images of different churches and things related to the church. And again, any of these images, they are free to use for whatever you want to use it for without attribution. Uh, that having been said, it's going to be difficult to find exactly the image you're looking for on a site like Morkfile because you're basically up to whatever people have decided they want to freely share. Uh, but typically, uh, you know, even for religious subjects, it hasn't been too hard to find stuff. If you put in things like Jesus Christ, you'll find lots of great images about Jesus there. Um, so this is, like I said, the first place that I will tend to go to to find images because I know whatever I find here is going to be available for whatever I want to use it for. My second go-to site, though, is a site called compfight.com. Compfight is great because it will search Flickr, and if you're aware, Flickr is an image storage site that a lot of people will use to store images. So we're going to do the same search here. We'll search for church. Now the thing about Comfight is it will search all of Flickr regardless of what the license is. So you need to make sure that whenever you're searching on Comfight over on the left hand here, under license, the default is going to be any license. So you'll have to click into the individual picture here to know whether or not you're going to be allowed to use it, whether it's subject to copyright, etc. But if you click on Creative Commons, it'll do that same search, but only return images that are under a Creative Commons license. So we can open up some of these and we'll take a look at what kind of licenses might have been established. Oh, interesting. Uh, they've slightly changed the way this works now, so it comes up here. So here, if you click on that Some Rights Reserves, it will share, go to the Creative Commons sites and tell you this particular image you can share and you can remix it. You can do anything you uh, want to do in terms of editing it, uh, but you have to attribute the original author. You cannot use it for commercial work, and you have to share alike, and that's a, another common thing you'll see with Creative Commons licenses, which means you cannot establish a copyright on whatever you use this image for. In other words, you have to freely share what you have been given, uh, which is a, a nice way to encourage other people to share what they might have done with that image. So again, all of these images on Comfite here, as long as you've got that Creative Commons button clicked, all of these will be available for some sort of Creative Commons. Again, some you may be able to edit, some not. Some you may have to attribute the original author, some you may not. Uh, but just as long as you're aware of that and use the images appropriately, you'll be fine. I'm going to give you some examples here in a PowerPoint that I've done. Uh, this first image you see up here came from Comfite. That's where I found it. Uh, and you can see down here at the bottom here, the bottom right of that slide for this PowerPoint, I just put in that credit because this was a photo that the credit was required. So it just says photo by Surfer Girl 30 and then I just put a slash and then I just put the source uh, Flickr CC so that people know I got it from Flickr and it's subject to a Creative Commons license. On the other hand this picture here uh, has no attribution attached to it. I found this one via morgue file so I didn't need to put any sort of attribution of who took the picture. It just freely stands alone without any sort of uh, uh, text on it uh, for those kind of attribution questions. So that's just a quick tip uh, on how to find and use uh, images for your PowerPoints that you may want to use in catechetical presentations or videos or whatnot. I hope that's uh, helped to clear up some confusion or questions you may have had about copyright and Creative Commons. I hope you're able to find a lot of great images to use in your religious education programs. God bless.